All right, y'all, so I'm gonna talk about the money I've made or lack thereof on my YouTube channel, where the channel's kind of grown uh, over the past year or so, kind of the challenges and pros that I've had this year, um, any sponsorships or uh, partnerships I've had with companies, and kind of what my vision is for the channel. So my goal is that if this goes anywhere, um, I'll keep you updated along the way. What did I make? What went well? What did I learn from? And we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing I want to do is talk about the investment into the channel. Uh, so one of the things that I first did was I bought a GoPro. I wanted to get an action cam. And the approach I took was that um, if you've used a GoPro or ever watched any GoPro footage, <clears throat> audio is horrible. So I initially bought a GoPro Hero 11, a Rode Video Micro 2, and a couple of extra batteries. And one of the things I found along the way is that technology sucks, <laughs> even if you buy name brand stuff. So in my first three to four months at the time that I'm filming this of doing YouTube, 50% um, of my GoPro batteries have failed and just completely stopped working. I don't know why. The initial Rode Video Micro 2 that I got did not work and record audio. So this is the first video that I'm shooting with the Rode mic. So hopefully it sounds good and cool. And um, there's been a lot of tech troubles along the way. But so year one, I spent probably like 780 ish dollars on the GoPro, the extra batteries, um, an external mic to help boost the audio. Um, and as well as a few other small accessories. So the Canon HF uh, G70, which is what I've got, it ran me with it, a small rig tripod, and a remote to easily turn it on and off, zoom in, zoom out. Um, all of that ran me about another 1300 plus bucks. All right, and then I would say the third large investment that I made was that all the footage is great, but one of the big challenges that I ran into when I first started with just the GoPro, I was editing stuff on my app, on my phone, through the GoPro app, and uh, to really get serious about this, I knew that I needed a computer that could handle editing videos in 4K, so if you know anything about files in 4K, they're huge. And they take a lot of memory and a lot of uh, computer power. So, um, I invested in a laptop. I got the Dell XPS 17 uh, with a lot of upgrades and that ran me about another 2100 bucks. All right, so you're seeing a lot of numbers right there, um, but luckily the damage wasn't all too bad. So when it comes to the GoPro and the Canon, luckily I work for a company where they're pretty cool. They give you $1,000 in a personal spending account uh, every year. To just pursue a hobby whether it's something fitness related you know what have you uh, they give you a thousand bucks to expense towards that so those no harm no foul yeah i had to front the money but it was reimbursed at the end of the month the personal computer um the wife and i we'd already budgeted about fifteen hundred dollars to get a good personal computer so we spent a little more just to get more ram an upgraded graphics card uh, and a little more storage and whatnot um, so we only spent about 600 bucks more on the computer than what we would have spent otherwise for um, a purchase we plan on making. So um, that wasn't too bad. So essentially, really, at the end of the day, I've pretty much just got that extra 600 bucks um, spent on this little hobby, and we'll see where it goes. So the rest of these items that I hope to cover in future videos, I think I'll knock them out pretty quick. So in order to make money on YouTube, if you don't know, uh, the first tier of monetization you get is at 500 subscribers uh, and a certain number of watch hours. Uh, at the time I'm recording this, I just got my 100th subscriber uh, like an hour or so ago after the first three or four months of kind of uploading videos. So. Um, at 500 subscribers, you can get things like super thanks and whatnot, um, but really the monetization that people think of when they think of YouTube is ad revenue. And so you won't get that until 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours on a video, or I think it's like 10 million shorts views or something like that. So um, that's not too terrible. When I look at my YouTube studio statistics, I am running on about that pace on my subscriber to watch hours. Uh, right now, they're pretty much paralleling, so at 100 subscribers, I've got like 400 watch hours-ish. 
So times both of those by 10 uh, to get 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, it looks like it's running uh, right along with one another. So anyways, those are pretty quick, pretty simple. Um, no companies, unfortunately, have reached out to me and said, hey, do you want a free gun or some very high value dollar item to review on your channel with no subscribers and hardly any views? It hasn't happened yet, but I'm hoping by this time next year, I'll get some, uh, and I may actively pursue some companies. And so uh, excited to see how that could grow. Um, I, I think those would be one of those notches in the belt where you have a company send you something. Uh, I feel like that's a cool landmark for someone creating a YouTube account. All right, so some of the challenges that I've talked about, uh, one obviously is just the time and the expense. Um, so the expense, the blow was lessened a little bit, like I said, by the company I work for. Uh, they give us a little, little bit of a stipend each year. Uh, so I was able to expense some, but not all of that. Um, and then the other thing, you know, there's more expense beyond just the equipment. You know, there's some stuff, like I mentioned, I've already bought that I'm gonna have to rebuy, like batteries already running out, getting duplicates of those, getting, you know, I'm gonna have to get a tree arm at some point because I want to film hunting videos. Um, so there's a lot of expense that I'm going to have to uh, incur on my own, uh, whether it's consumables for doing like a shotgun turkey load pattern test, like when I just posted the other day. Um, you know, I spent 60 or $70 just to buy a couple of boxes of ammunition that I wouldn't have otherwise spent. Um, so there's a lot of additional costs that adds up, like with any hobby. All right, so one of the things that I've learned, and this goes to the most popular videos thing, is, so my most popular video is a video that I uploaded, I think it was maybe my second one, when I started uploading some videos this fall with my GoPro. And I knew those videos were bad when I uploaded them, but I basically just wanted to practice editing for when I got a better camera, when I got a video uh, editing laptop. Uh, to just basically have a skill set under me. So I'm a firm believer in the only way you strengthen any muscle or you get better at any skill is to use it and to do it. Um, so I, my best performing video today was one, I, I, I think it was entitled like The Average Man's Deer Hunt or something like that. And it was a deer hunting video where you can't see any deer. And that one is like at almost 4,000 views. So that was pretty cool. Um, it ultimately randomly just took off in the algorithm like a, several weeks after it was posted. It just, people started liking, people started commenting on it, and it just took off and got views. So it's very cool to refresh that video every few minutes and see it going up hundreds of views. Uh, that was very encouraging. Another thing that I've learned too is with that, and kind of what I was going with that, a lot of times your best video isn't your best video. So I've made some videos that I thought for the production quality and tools and this level of experience that I had at the time that I thought were gonna be good that weren't. Like I posted a, 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 a video that I thought was more action packed. I think it's called like Wacky Worm Fishing in the Winter or something like that. And it's a pretty good video, it got like 200 views. I would have thought it would have been a way better video than a deer hunting video that shows no deer where I'm constantly catching bass. But you know, you never know so. Um, one of the things every resource that I saw said to do if you're a new aspiring channel, just post content. Don't overthink it. Just post content, get it out there. Don't overthink about what you're gonna say when you're gonna post it. Just get it out there and let it do its thing as you start to grow your base. So that's where I'm at and that's one lesson that I learned there. All right, so we talked about how I'm definitely in the hole on the money. One of the things that I would love to do that would be important to me would be if this channel went anywhere, maybe taking a portion of that. Of course, I will tithe 10% on everything that I make because it's not mine anyways. Am I right? Um, and I'm not scared to use my platform uh, to share how I feel when it comes to that. But um, I'd love to find some kind of something, whether it is a local charity, you know, what have you where I can take a portion of proceeds, donate to that. That's something that's important to me. So uh, if this video ever goes anywhere, um, you know, I will keep autonomy on the channel as far as proceeds uh, are received and how they go to that. So I have a pretty awesome job. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't need the money. This is just a hobby. So I would love to take anything that I get back and, uh, and give it back. And then ultimately why trying to become a YouTuber makes me a hypocrite is because now that I've started trying to upload videos, I have always been the world's worst at when every single YouTuber says, and before you go, like this video and give me a comment. I'm the world's worst at consuming content and not liking and not 
commenting. I'm just on to the next one. And now that I'm uploading videos, the videos that get the comments, that get the likes, get the views. That's what the algorithm does. Here's a little secret for people who may not know. This is YouTube's algorithm. If you keep people on your video and they're entertained and they're not clicking off, those are the videos that they're gonna boost in the algorithm. So there's like an abandonment metric that you get in your YouTube studio account when you start uploading content. They're gonna look at that, they're gonna look and see who's interacting and what content seems to just get overall traction and that's what it does well. I've also made one kind of commitment to an in of mine. I was joking with her, um, I was referencing a large YouTube channel um, of a guy and I just Googled it and I said, hey, you know, what does this guy make on YouTube? And take it with a grain of salt with whatever, you know, do with it what you will, the information on the internet. But it basically said, I think it was Kendall Gray, his channel. Um, I think I saw something, again, take it with a grain of salt, it was on Google, so who knows. But he makes approximately 30000 a month on YouTube. Whether or not that's true or not, whether or not that's just YouTube with his chant, with his store, I don't know if it's one of his channels, all of his channels. But I told them, I was like, hey, if I, get, if I ever get to this channel where I'm making 30 k per month, I was like, I will give you a month's check. Uh, just because a lot of my in-laws, when I first started um, posting videos, I would say, hey, here's a link to my video. I would love it if you would just give it a thumbs up and just leave a comment. <laughs> and so I'm going to try to remember those who helped me out when I was small. And that's my commitment. If this channel at any point in time ever gets to where for a fiscal year and makes 30000 a month, I'm going to give one of those monthly checks to... Uh, to, um, to my in-laws who helped me out. So anyways, hope you liked it. Stay tuned. I'm going to keep posting content. Like I said, with anything you do, hopefully you get better over time. So hopefully the content will get better um, over time. And I would love for you to help grow this thing with me. So let me know if you've ever tried to start a channel, what helped you? What did you learn along the way? And just any tips or encouragement would be much appreciated. All right, y'all. I'm out.